Hello everybody. How is everybody doing? So today we're going to uh, play with uh, GPT-3. Uh, GPT-3 is the engine who is behind uh, ChatGPT. I'm sure like all of you have heard about ChatGPT, uh, like it, they have like launched a few months ago and you know now everybody is talking about it. Um, so you've been like a lot of, a lot of you like asked me to uh, play with it and I had no idea how it worked and so I think in December, I uh, joined the hackathon to learn how everything works under the hood and how we could use uh, the API of uh, GPT-3 so that I can explain it to you. So today we're going to uh, look at how it works and then we're going to create a very simple um, uh, program. It's going to be a script, a Python script that is going to take as an input a title, a title of a blog post and then it's gonna generate the entire blog post for us. Um, so this is gonna be, I think, very, very cool. This is a session that I've done with um, the students in Rwanda a few weeks ago. Uh, they all loved it. Some of them like had to leave before the end, so I promised I would do that uh, you know, a few weeks later with them too. So here we are, we are online today, and we're gonna do this live together. Um, as a reminder, um, I'm not very proficient in Python, so maybe I'm going to ask you some questions and hopefully you can help me build this program. Um, we're going to wait maybe like one or two more minutes um, for everybody to join. And while we're waiting for those who are here, if you want to code along, you can do that. You can go to uh, openai.com, create an account. It's going to take you like one or two minutes um, and then create an API key. And this API key, we're going to need it to be able to, uh, uh, to request the, uh, the API to do some stuff for us. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty happy to be, uh, to be here today. It's been a few weeks that uh, we were not live together. The last session was super cool with uh, students. I don't know if you were there. Uh, if you haven't checked it, it was uh, eight uh, students from cohort 9 and 10 doing, uh, you know, recording Malloc from scratch. So that was pretty cool. Um, all right, so should we get into it already? So if you are connected to uh, the API, the Open API platform, you can follow along with me. But essentially, the first thing we're going to do is going to go to the playground to be able to uh, see how we're going to create the blog post. So a blog post is usually like quite long. Um, and we're going to see that there are like some restriction with, with the API that we're going to have to overcome. So we're going to have to be like a little bit creative to create something that is as long as a blog post. But let's get right into it. So imagine, so what do you want us to write today about? Give me some titles and I'm going to select one of, one of them. And while I'm waiting for you to uh, get some titles, remember we have like a 20 second delay because it's a streaming on YouTube. Uh, while we have, we are waiting for the titles. Um, this is a session that is open to everybody. If you want to be able to understand everything, you're gonna need to uh, understand the basics of APIs and the basics of Python. This is not mandatory. If you're a student of ALX, you don't have to be there. If you're a student of Whole Button, you don't have to be there. Uh, but everybody's welcome. Uh, yes. Michel, uh, the API keys, you create your account on OpenAI and then uh, probably here you see, you click here on your account name and then you see view API keys and then you can create new API keys here if you want to. And with that, uh, we're, gonna be, we're gonna be using one of those API keys that you have created if you want to, uh, if you want to do the same thing as as me. All right, so let's go back to the playgrounds. Okay, so what are the titles you're suggesting? The human history, the future of AI, the future of AI. Why Vim is awesome? Oh boy, maybe we're gonna have to do like a blog post about why Emacs better than Vim. What do you think? 
Uh, how can AI help my productivity regardless of my field? How developers can leverage on AI to improve productivity? How to play football? The evolution of the human, human brain? The functions of air? Okay. How technology is shaping the future of the human experience? How to hack your brain for increased productivity? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Um, okay. A lot of very good titles. Will AI replace developers? Huh. Maybe we're going to go with this one because I get a lot of questions about this one. Uh, I can tell you the answer is no right away. But let's see what the AI thinks about it. I think I like this one. So let's try to do like, will AI replace developers? Okay. So let's just ask GPT-3 right away. So if we do this, uh, basically it's going to give us like a short answer. No, AI will not replace developers. AI is a tool that developers can use uh, to help them work more efficiently, blah, 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 blah. One of the things you want to look at here is a maximum length. This is one of the parameters. And because the maximum length is very small, uh, then the entire uh, text that we're going to get is going to be small. Note that the maximum length is not about the answer, but the total of the answer plus uh, the question. Okay, so we want to write a blog post, right? So we want to make it like as big as possible. So let's put it at 3000. Okay, and we're going to try it again. Okay. Huh. It's still not giving us, a, you know, like a lot of content to create a blog post about it. So it gives us the answer, but like it's it's quite short, right? So maybe we can say, hey, like um, write an article. Maybe write a blog post. Write a blog post about um, will AI replace developers uh, in... 4,000 words. Let's try that. Okay. This seems to be much, much, much better. <clears throat> so we're going to wait for the website to give us the entire enter. Actually, you know, what's happening is that the AI has already all the text, but for some reason, uh, OpenAI is just like making it say it as, you know, like this way. And, you know, one of the reasons why they do this is, go is because they have like too many people uh, using their website. So... This way, you have to wait a little bit before you make another request. You're going to see with the APIs, we're going to get like the entire text right away. Okay, so it's much better, right? So there's kind of like an introduction and then like they, they say, okay, like this is what we're going to see here. And then it's like one, two, three, four, five paragraph before there's a conclusion. And this is the conclusion in two paragraphs. So it's, I mean, it's pretty good, right? Um, but it's still not, you know, big enough for like a very good blog post. It's still like, it's kind of a, like a very short article that you can find on like, you know, like an online, uh, you know, magazine. It doesn't really go deep into like some of the details that, you know, we really wanted to, uh, uh, to see. So like, again, one of the restrictions is because Every time we're going to ask the AI something, it's not going to go um, above the maximum length. So we're going to have to think about like one way to make it bigger. Do you guys have an idea of how we can, you know, have a trick to make this bigger, to create the blog posts bigger, like a big blog post with a lot of different, uh, you know, parts and uh, something that is much more complete than, than what it is right now. 
Oh, Michelle, it gives you like only eight paragraphs. Yeah. How can we make it like, you know, better? Does it support adding images to the articles? Uh, right now, no. But we can see, like, maybe if we have time, we can try to see uh, if we can find a way to do this with another API, not the GPT-3, but maybe the DALI-2. Uh, okay, so Tolilope, you're saying, you know, ask it for a minimum of 2,500 uh, 2, words. Let's see what they have come up with. Um, how many words do we have here? Do, 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 do. Yeah, definitely not. Let me see. Um, maybe with words. Okay. So here, how do I see the number of words? So here this is like 525 words. Hmm. 525 words. Okay. Here I said like in 3000 words and it gave me only 500 words. Let's try it again. Maybe there was a miscommunication between GPT-3 and us. So if we say exactly, wait, what was it? Okay. In terms of minimum, let's see this. <clears throat> if it works, oh, promise you're saying you can say to continue the previous article. Yes, you can do that, but there's already has been a conclusion. So if you continue the, the article, then, you know, I don't know if it's going to work. Maybe it's going to give us you like more text, but the problem is that it's going to be like really strange. Abdullah is, is asking like, what's the difference between ChatGPT and GPT-3? So essentially GPT-3 is the engine that ChatGPT uh, is using. And you see here that ChatGPT, um, like the main difference in the product itself is that ChatGPT uh, keeps the context of the conversation while GPT-3 is not. So even we're saying like, even when we're saying in 3000 words minimum, we still don't have a lot of words. Actually, here you see the number of tokens. And it's like 634 tokens. And in terms of words, it's saying it's it's actually 500 and, 507 words. So this trick is not working. We can try to see, like, if we do, like, continue this article... Okay, not really what we wanted to do. I think it was worth a shot, but it's not really uh, it's not really working. Okay, um, so now we have like some good ideas. So someone is saying, um, give you ask it to give you an outline of the article. That's a good idea. Uh, Neo is saying, try to find a way to give the first response to be bullet point breakdown and then using those prompt as a block structure. That's a very good idea too. Same thing, relaxing, relaxing Nara is saying the same thing. And I think this is probably the way we're going to do it. Uh, if we say like write a long blog post, it's not going to work either. Here it's like 3000 words minimum. We can try write a long blog post because if we want, if we have one request, we can do everything. It's better than if we have to do like many requests. Remember, like 
when you uh, create an account, you have like a, a small number of free API calls and then you have to pay. So the less API call you do, the better. Let's, let's see if like this trick works. So here we just added a long blog post. Uh, does the same question give the same answer always? No, it's going to give you all the time something different. Yeah, it's already in the conclusion and it's it's very short, so it, it didn't work. 600 tokens. So it, this is like still like very short. Uh, Mikael, if we if we tell him to expand the text, it's going to be the same thing with the continue, um, you know, ask that we had before. So <clears throat> I like the fact that, uh, you know, someone, someone mentioned, maybe we can try to find like, all, what are the key elements or like the synopsis and then like try to see if we can do that. So um, I want to write a blog post about, oh, what was it? I don't remember. Will AI replace developers? Developers. Uh, give me the synopsis okay <clears throat> so this would be a good synopsis but it's kind of very hard to take this and then break it down into different things right if we say, okay, this blog post, and when we ask, um, if we take this, we break it down into different things, it's gonna, it's not gonna work, right? So I like the idea of like trying to have like um, bullet points, like one of you mentioned. Uh, in a bullet points form. Okay. Introduction of the concept of artificial intelligence. Dis discuss the potential of AI to replace developer. Analyze the pros and cons of AI. Consider the current state of. Discuss the potential of. Analyze. Okay. So that's pretty cool. But um, it's going to be strange to have like those kind of. Oh, no, maybe no. This, this is, I think, can work. Okay, so let's see, like, now we have, like, we have this, right? So now, like, we're going to ask the AI to write a paragraph about each of those. So let me write this down somewhere. Uh, maybe I'm just going to do another playground. Okay. So, okay, I'm going to take this one. Okay, write a long paragraph about this and see what it comes up with. <clears throat> yeah, Daniel, is exactly what we're doing. We're asking for an outline, then we have it uh, expand on each. All in one comment. Mm. So the problem is that with all with one comment, we're going to be restricted to the maximum length. Even if we put it like big, we've seen that it doesn't really like uh, go up to the maximum that we can uh, we can have. So here is this is like uh, you know like two hundred and seventy tokens in one paragraph, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them, uh, seven paragraph times 
okay, like 250, it's gonna be much, much, much bigger, right? Uh, we can try to do something, you know, write a long paragraph, a long um, paragraph about in more than, we can try this, but I don't think it's gonna work, right? To like uh, two thousand. <clears throat> Woog Woo Justin, you're saying has to arrange it in using the below method. One introduction to be twenty lines. Two body to have five paragraphs each with three hundred words. Three a conclusion to make the whole blog post three thousand words. We can try this trick. We can try it and see how it works. Okay, so this seems to be no it's not still not bigger than before. Let's see. Okay, so that's 600 tokens, so it's uh, twice as big. But you see that it's not 2,000 words at all. It's very far from there. But it's still like, uh, it's still pretty good. So I wanna, I wanna test, one of you were suggesting to say, write the synopsis and then expand each of the bullet points. Then expand each of the bullet points into a big paragraph. Let's see how it, how it works. Hmm. I haven't thought about this one. It's a good idea. Seems to work. Let's see if it could come up with, you know, big paragraphs. So it seems that the trick is working in terms of uh, structure, but in terms of content, it doesn't really work. It's very small. For each of those bullet points, you see, it's, it gives us like four lines of text. So it was worth a shot, but it's not working. So it seems that like our idea of like, we create a synopsis, then like for each of those lines, we're gonna ask the AI to create a paragraph about it. And then it should work. So we've seen that, okay, let's try another one. Analyze the pros and cons of AIs of replacing developers, okay. Right, a uh, long paragraph. Or maybe it's a chapter. Let's try long chapter about <laughs> hmm. You want a detailed paragraph? It's a good idea. We can try that. Oh, this one's big. Uh, hop. So this one's good, but like what we can see here is that it has taken this as the entirety of a potential blog post, right? Because here there's an introduction, there's the pros, there's the cons, and there's a conclusion. We can't really have this inside already a blog post. It doesn't work, right? So how do you think we can, uh, you know, uh, get over that? We don't want for each of the 
For each of the paragraphs, we don't want to have an introduction, a conclusion, and something in between. We can't have this for each of the paragraphs. When I'm ask, when I'm waiting for your answer, let me see like what are the other questions on the chat. So Joy is asking like, does Chat GPT understand that when you tell it uh, it in three thousand words, I doubt you're gonna keep prompting it with additional build up commands to achieve a long essay. So uh, remember, guys, like this is not ChatGPT. ChatGPT does not have the same restrictions, actually, because it's, uh, you know, like this is a restriction for GPT-3 that is given to us by OpenAI. Um, ChatGPT is a product that is built on top of GPT-3. So we are like two different products. GPT, chat GPT, you can like, there's like, I've, I've tested that, I think, and you can really have, you can give it like long, very long prompts. You can like give it like a long uh, article and ask it to uh, make a summary out of it. And it's going to work here. Like if you, if you give it like a, you know, more than 3000 words, it's not going to work for the summary because it's not going to have like enough, um, enough words uh, left to create the summary. So remember, the context is not ChatGPT, it's GPT-3, it's, it's very different. Um, the question's not detailed enough, okay. Use the trait now. Uh, yes, Michael, you, we can like copy part of the answer and then ask it to expand, but this is not the problem right now. The problem right now is that we have the synopsis. We have uh, each of the line that is given to us by the AI as the, the next prompt to expand on this and create a paragraph. But the problem is like each of them cannot have an introduction and a conclusion. It doesn't make sense. The blog post itself should have an introduction and a conclusion, but not within the paragraphs. Yeah, so Boliwa Tife says, write an, write an article fit for a blog post for the topic. So what's missing here is the context. And giving more context is going to help uh, the AI to create what you want to create. So I am writing a blog post about I'm going to take the exact same thing. A blog post uh, which title with the title Okay, write a long chapter, a long detailed chapter about uh, for this blog post uh, about this. Yeah, okay, let's try that. Yeah, it doesn't work. Chapter is not the correct keyword, said promise. Okay. What would be the right keyword then? Maybe a section? Yes, Mohamed, this is going to be converted into Python. But first, we're going to need to understand how GPT-3 works. So here, this is the playground. And then this is what we're going to give the prompt from Python. So we need to understand how everything works before we can automate it, essentially. So we're, we're making a lot of tests. You, you were playing in the playground. And then we're going to take everything we've learned and translate that into Python so that everything's automated.
Can you develop a bot using this? Yes, of course you do. You can. Uh, yeah. Okay. Write a four hundred word paragraph. Yeah, like, but it's not. It's not gonna give uh, the AI like the the context, right? So let's see. So is this a problem of the first prompt or is this the problem of the second prompt? Oh, Neo is suggesting that we remove the question uh, of the title and rewrite it as the impact of AI on developers. We can try that and then we have like different things here maybe the impact of AI on developers. Okay. Okay, let's see if it works. <clears throat> okay, so it seems that in this case, I'm gonna stop it. In this case, it says, before delving into the impact of artificial intelligence on developers, it is important to first understand the technology itself. So it understood the context, and then it's gonna write something about this, given that context. So I think it's better. Obeta, the version that I'm using is not free. It's a paid version, but when you create an account, you have some free uh, API calls. So you can use it yourself, but to a certain limit, then you have to pay a little bit. It's not very expensive, but it's, you know, it's a paid version. Okay. All right, guys, we're digressing a little bit. Let's refocus, okay? So this seems to do the trick. Let's try again. Okay, 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 okay. Sounds good seems to do the trick but it's not exactly like the it's not exactly the uh, the topic though right the, the like the initial topic is a little bit different it's like will ai replace developers so let's try that again <clears throat> Overview of the current state of AI technology. How AI is already replacing developers in some areas. Potential effect of AI in the software development industry. Challenges faced by AI in replacing developers. Conclusion. Okay. Uh, okay, let's try this one. Okay. So it seems to make sense, right? So it seems that if we give it a little bit of context, probably a point here is better, um, then it's gonna write something about this context within this uh, idea, okay? Write extensively on each paragraph. Okay, write a long, detailed, and extensive chapter. Oh, someone was saying it's not the right word. Maybe section? 
I fix if it's better. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna let it run until the end to see how long the paragraph is and see if you know if it works. Okay, so it's like 400 tokens. So maybe something around like 350 words, something like this, maybe 300 words. So it's not too bad, right? Um, do you think, so 300 words, do you think that we want to have like a little bit more bullet points or maybe like less? Maybe we can try to say, uh, a number of section. Give me the synopsis. Uh, the synopsis. Uh, okay. Right. Oops. Right. Uh, the synopsis for this blog post. Give a list of I don't know text sections <clears throat> in a bullet point format. Let's see if it works. Oh, okay. So what we want is only this as an output. So it's still, you know, it, like the idea works, but it's not perfect yet. We need to get rid of this. Um, so maybe we can like give, oops, give a list of 10 sections in a bullet for format about this blog post. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so this seems to work. Okay, let's try to do it like a few times just to make sure that we're not gonna have any surprise with our program. Okay. Yeah, Neo. So the idea again is to, uh, for those who just uh, who are just joining, we're creating the synopsis uh, because of the restriction of GPT-3 API. Uh, we can't have like we can't ask it simply to write a blog post. So we have to get creative uh, to create a bigger blog post. And so the way we found, uh, maybe there's other ways, but like the way you guys um, wanted to try is to create a synopsis with different bullet points. And then for each of those bullet points, we're going to ask GPT-3 to actually write the paragraph. So for each of them, we're going to say, hey, I'm writing a blog post about this. Write a long, detailed, extensive section for this blog post about... Up. And then we saw that uh, this was working. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here. Maybe we can like rewrite this to be like a little bit more better. I'm writing a blog post with the title. Uh, and you know, like if we want to be really complete, one thing we can do is that we can say, hey, like this is, this is the, these are all the sections about my blog post a 
write about section write a long detailed complete on para no I can try also like a 500 word paragraph about section this section so this way it has like the entire context so first we tried with only with the title now we have like the entire synopsis so it should know a little bit better about what is the uh, what is the context and the context is very important because like if we only say hey write about conclusion without having any context then it's not going to give us something that is related to our blog post right if we if we we can try that okay we remove the context so write a long detail complete 400 words paragraph about this the conclusion of this study is blah 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 blah. it doesn't have the context so you know it's just writing something completely random it's not about ai and it's not about our topic so like the context is very very important um no i can't come back okay uh Okay, so I am writing a blog post about with the title, okay, the, C, uh, the list of sections of this blog post is the following so then we have like all the sections I paste it here and like write uh, write the section whatever it is we're gonna loop through those sections in uh, detailed and complete way in I don't know 500 words minimum <clears throat> oh so William had tried something and it says it created like something with like more than 1200 words by asking the AI to critique the statement AI will replace developers yeah, this is pretty cool. But like if you want to have like something much longer, you see that you have you like a real challenge uh, to create something much bigger. And I think with our with our way, it's it's going to work better to create something, you know, better for the blog post, which is like a longer format than 1200 words most of the time. OK. So this seems to work, right? 700 uh, tokens. Uh, this includes all of this, so it's probably like it's probably like 500 words. Oh, I have a typo here. <clears throat> okay. All right, maybe. So I think I think we're done, right? I think it works. So let me So now let's let's think about like how we're going to put this into effect with our program. So first we're going to have to have so this is going to be the prompt. Okay? Then maybe 10 sections is going to be a little bit too much, but we can always like trick this. You know, can say like 5 to start with. And then you can you can test with like 20 if you want to. But you're going to see that it takes a little bit of time. So you want to make sure that 
I want to make sure that we have time to uh, to code everything. Oh, maybe five is not enough. I don't know, six, seven, eight. Okay, let's keep ten. <laughs> oh, I think also we really prefer that these are numbers, right? So that like it can give the AI like a little bit more context. Um, can we say like, I think numbered should work. Numbered. Submit. Yeah, okay, so this works. When I tried five, it was not numbered, so let's see. Okay, this works. Let's see again, just to make sure that this works all the time. Okay. Uh, all right, so then we take like each of those, then we're gonna loop through each of those lines, each of those sections, and we're gonna take this to give the AI the context. I'm gonna put it here in the prompt. It's still the same title that the user is gonna ask for. And then we're gonna we're gonna loop through like all of these, as I said, and then for each of those, we're gonna say, we're gonna replace this part here. And then it's gonna give us about 500 words about this section within the context of this title with this synopsis. Okay. So I think we have everything we need now to start coding. Is there any question about uh, the process? No? <clears throat> okay, no question? All right, so it's time to go into our terminal. And maybe before we do this, maybe we're going to check the documentation. What do you think? All right, so here I'm at the documentation section. Uh, and then you can go through API reference because we're going to do API calls. And then we're going to do, oh, one of the things you can see here is that the mode that we used is complete. So this is what we're going to use too. So we're going to be able to, we're going to need to be authenticating, you know, making requests and making completions. So the way you do completions, Uh, what is it? Mm -hmm. No, it's here. It's right here. Okay. Okay. So this is a curl model, but we're going to use Python. So you can select Python and then it says, okay, you have to import OS. You have to import OpenAI. Here you're going to get your API key from the environment. Uh, you can also hard code it if you want to. Uh, but then you, it's going to be uh, a little bit more tricky to share your code on GitHub or with other people because then your API is going to be inside your code. So this is one of the way you can use to make sure that you can still share securely your code without um, showing your API code, your API key. So we're going to do like basically export OpenAI API key equal your OpenAI key in the shell and then from the Python script you're going to be able to get it from the environment with OS get on. Okay, this is going to set your API key for OpenAI and then you're just going to call uh, OpenAI complete create with the model, with the prompt, my token and the temperature that you, uh, that you have selected in here. These are like the things you can see here. The temperature we've used is 0 0.7, the max length is this one. The model is this one. So we're going to reuse those, um, those parameters in our prompt, uh, for our prompt in the Python code, just like we did it in the playground. Okay. GPT-3 is more effective than ChatGPT. 
So again, these are like two different products. So GPT-3 is the engine, so you can do whatever you want with it. And ChatGPT is a product that is based and is using GPT-3 to create a chatbot. Okay, so <clears throat> let's just start with this. Import, da -na 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 -na. okay. So now let's go into our terminal. Up, terminal, MKDR. Uh, I don't know today, CD today. Emacs, block.py, okay. And here it says, okay, you need to do this. So we're gonna do that. So I already set my environment variable uh, OpenAI API key. So it's already set, but if you want to do this, you know how to do this, right? Export this equal your API key, whatever it is. And then you have it in your environment. And then you say, okay, OpenAI.completion.create. So Let's check our model name. Our model name is TextDaVinci003. So TextDaVinci003. The prompt is a little bit different though, right? So our prompt is <coughs> the first one, right? Is I want to write a blog post about something. And in this case, it was this. Okay. <coughs> Uh, max token, we said, okay, 3000. Temperature was 0 0.7. Okay. Feels good, prompt's good. So we're gonna try that and then we're gonna, so let's try that first. <clears throat> Go ahead and wait. So this is gonna be our synopsis and we probably want to save it. Synopsis with an I. Synopsis, okay. And then we're just gonna print it. So we're just gonna do that first to see if that works. Okay, so we'll find three, blog, Let's see if we get, oh, no, it doesn't work. End of line while scanning string later on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's in the prompt. Okay, what's wrong? Um, okay. Why is this not working? Backslash before I think. Okay, let's just do this. No, oh, same problem. What's wrong? Oh, okay. Okay, so this is what we got from the API. So we got a structure with choices, which is an array of all of these things. And here we have the field text with introduction to AI and impact of developers. Then three, the pros and cons, and for the future of AI, and the conclusion is number five. So it seems to work, right? So let's try to get only this part, which is what we want, okay? And try to print that. So from there, it's going to be, <coughs> we uh, say this as a synopsis, so it's gonna be synopsis, the choices, uh, brackets, zero, the first one, dot text. Okay, so print synopsis, dot choice, is zero dot text. Let's try that again. 
and here we are. We have everything we need. Uh, the one thing that we don't want though is like those lines here, those empty lines. So we're going to use um, strip. So wait, so synopsis equals this. Okay. And then I'm going to strip that synopsis equals synopsis dot I think it's strip right <clears throat> okay and here we have the exact good format that we want to have okay so this is the first step. Now what we need to do is we're going to clean the code a little bit. So we have this, what we want. Uh, this is supposed to change given the input of the person, right? So it's not, we're not, the, our script is not supposed to write only about will AI replace developers. Our script, you give it a title and then it's going to write a blog post about the title, okay? Elvin, the, yes, the session is being recorded, so you're going to be able to uh, see it later if, if you just joined. Um, so <clears throat> the way we want to do this, basically, like this is a script, so we want to say, hey, like this is the title that I want to write about. Um, so we're going to need to ask to get the first parameter of the program and take it as the title and replace it within this prompt. Okay? So... The way we do this is that we're going to import this and we're going to do a title equals sys.argv1 right and then print title just to make sure this is working and then we're going to create the prompt and the prompt is essentially this. Okay. This. Uh, but here is going to be about. And then it's plus. Check. Plus the title. Okay, I'm going to print the prompt to debug. Prompt, okay, and here prompt equals prompt, prompt, prompt. So this should work. Let's see. Uh, the title is, what was the title again? Will AI replace developers? Okay, so this is not working. It's because I forgot. this here <clears throat> and this is still not working because here I have a dot of course so here is my prompt so we can see that it took what I put here and this is working so let's try with another prompt uh, the future of the world Okay, impact of technology on the world, global climate change. So it seems to work pretty well. So we just want to make sure that uh, like the person has a title at least. So we're just gonna make sure that we have something, otherwise it's, gonna, it's not gonna work. So we're just gonna make sure, uh, what is it, here? Uh, 
So if we don't have the title, so essentially if it's not two because the name of the program is one of the parameter, uh, then we have a problem, it's done. And we're just gonna say print error, leave the title please. And we're just gonna exit. Okay, so that way if we do something like this and we have nothing, we're gonna, not gonna continue our program. Uh, wait. Uh, I should not go there. I should not go there. So what's wrong? Let's do some callback. Did I forget to save? No, I did not forget to save that. supposed to exit oh all right okay now it works okay I forgot the parenthesis here okay so now if I don't have the title the program is not going to continue because it should not continue um, okay so let's go back to our initial one So I want to write a blog post about this. Everything seems to work pretty fine. Yes, out of this, you can create a web app, uh, Sir Sanctified, uh, and you know make it, a, make it a web app. So like anybody can go on your website and then create a blog post with just the title. Actually, there are companies doing this, uh, a little bit more advanced version than what we're doing right now, of course. And you know, like one of these is a billion dollar company. Okay, so this is working, the prompt is working, and this, we have our synopsis. So now what did we say? Now we have to loop through all the lines, and for each of those, we're going to ask OpenAI, uh, the GPT-3, uh, to give us uh, the text that is related to this within the context. So if you remember our, let me switch uh, real quick to the web browser. So we're done with this face, right? Now we have like all of these. And so now we're going to loop through that. Okay. And so what we're saying is, this is the prompt. The one thing, the two things we need to replace depending on the input is this, this is going to be the title that is given us by uh, the user. And this, while we're looping through all of those sections, for each of them, we're going to replace it here. And then we should get something like this in, is, uh, as an answer. So, uh, all right, prompt. No, like for each of the line, right? So how do we loop through the lines of the synopsis? So we're going to use split lines, right? So lines equals uh, synopsis dot split line, split lines. Okay, and this, then like for each of the line, so for lines in lines, then we're going to do something. So first we're going to print those just to make sure we have what we want, okay? Up. Okay, so we have everything we need except that we have a backslash n at the end of each of those. So we're gonna do sinusip slash strip again before we do the speed lines. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, so this seems to work. Okay, now uh, so that we can go a little bit faster and then I, call, I can also save a little bit of money. 
I'm going to stop calling uh, this for the synopsis. And I'm just going to say synopsis. And we're going to remove that later on, right? But sorry. OK, synopsis equal. I'm just going to take the last version. And I'm going to use this as the synopsis. Uh, ta -ta -ta. Work? No. Yes. Okay. So that works. So it goes a little bit faster, right? Because we don't have to do the the first uh, call. And of course, I forgot to switch back to the terminal. Sorry, guys. Okay. Let me do this all over again. Okay. So we were here. And now I have my synopsis here that I printed. And we said that we need to go through each of the lines of the synopsis. So for each of those lines, the way we do this, we're going to split the synopsis by line. So we're going to do lines equals synopsis dot split lines. OK. And then we're going to loop through those lines. So for line in lines. We're going to create the prompt that we said uh, that we talked about earlier and ask GPT-3 to write a paragraph about this line, which is like one of the section. OK, but to start with, just to make sure we have the right formats, we're going to print each line. It's the only thing we're going to do. OK. OK, so it seems that we have everything we need. <coughs> And we're just going to uh, strip the output just to make sure. Then the other thing that I said is to go a little bit faster for the sake of the developing, we're going to uh, stop calling OpenAI for the synopsis. OK, and we're just going to Take the last version of the synopsis, which is this one, so that we don't have to wait for the API call to come back. OK. So now it's going to go fast. OK. So let's see. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. So now we said that for each of those lines, we have to do this prompt. So we're going to create the prompt for each of those lines. OK. So let's go back to the terminal. And then we're going to print the prompt. So prompt, prompt equal. Uh, so this is what we want as the prompt. And the prompt is. OK, I am writing a blog post with the title. Hmm. Plus, this is going to be the title. And plus up. Uh, OK, let's do this like by uh, step so that everybody can follow. So the first one is, I'm writing a blog post about with the title. And this is the title, right? Mm -hmm. OK. This was the right uh, variable, right? Title? Yeah, title. So I'm writing a blog post with the title, title. The list of the fake section of this blog post is the following. 
the list of the section of his blog post is the following. Okay, and then we're going to put the synopsis. Synopsis. Okay. Write the section. Write the section. Plus the current section, which is the line. Okay. In a detailed and complete way, in three, uh, in five hundred words minimum. Okay, does it make sense? So let's just print the the prompt, and then exit here just to make sure. Okay. So let's see. I am writing a blog post with the title. The title. The list of sections of this blog post is the following. The synopsis. Maybe we want to go. To the new line write the section line which is the line and we can put actually here we can say this is section i think it's a better name okay in a detailed and complete way in 500 words minimum okay so this is like the prompt that we have uh, created in the playground and we're just replacing the title and the section as uh, we said we would and of course we have an invalid syntax uh, what's wrong okay can someone tell me what's wrong I am writing a blog post with the title title the list of the section of this blog post is the following Write the section section in detail. So I spotted this, but it's I don't think this is the error. What's the error? What's the problem? Section of your blog post is the following. Okay. Put the addition after title. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Stella. You found it, I think. Okay. All right. So let's see. I am writing a blog post with the title Will AI Replace Developers? The list of sections of this blog post is the following. Okay, we want to have like a backslash in here, but then introduction, history, and etc. Write the section one introduction. Why is relevant to developers in a detailed and complete way? Okay, so we just need to add a backslash in after is the following. Let's try that again. <clears throat> I am writing a blog post with the title Will AI Replace Developers? The list of sections of this blog post is the following Introduction, History, etc. etc. Write the section number one. Okay. So we're ready to give this prompt now to GPT 3. Uh, okay. We don't need to print this anymore. It works. We don't need to print this anymore. It works too. I'm just going to make one call to make sure we have the right uh, feedback from GPT-3. But essentially, we're going to take the same thing here that we have here. And so, up. so synopsis. So this is not the synopsis, this is the section detail, section paragraph. Okay, we have the prompt, same thing. We don't need a th like 3000 tokens really, because we said like 500. So we have the prompt on top of that, let's just say like 750 is enough. Same thing above, we don't need 3000, right? Just put like 1000 just to make sure, but it's way too much already. And then 
we do the same thing here section paragraph equals section paragraph choices and we're going to strip it strip it section paragraph section paragraph and we're going to print the section paragraph so this is going to be only the paragraph number one and then we exit we don't want to make too many calls if we have an error if we if you make too many uh, calls with error in your prompt or an error in your um, request OpenAI might uh, turn down like uh, shut down your account so you want to play it safe okay so now we have the request a lot of time okay so we got this the introduction of artificial intelligence into the world of technology has uh, brought about a wave of changes to how we develop software, AI, blah, 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 it's in its basic form. AI technology is becoming increasingly the use of AI, inclusion, na, 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 na. So it's pretty cool. So now we can look through all the sections. Um, we don't want to print the synopsis anymore. Here. At one point, we probably want to print the title. We print the title and then we print the section. And then we print the paragraph. And then we print the section again and so on and so forth. So let's try to make it run through the five sections. Okay, <clears throat> so this is our title. This is the title of the first section. And right now, GPT-3 is working on writing a paragraph about this section. Okay, it's not very fast today, the API of GPT-3. Okay, so we have our first section written and now we continue with section number two. Okay, and on to section number three and so on and so forth. So I'm not going to wait because it's super slow. Uh, but the one thing we want to do now is to actually create uh, the, the file that is going to contain our blog post. So here we print this. We want to do also a backslash in here. And we want to print this section. here <clears throat> okay and here our blog post blog post equals title plus backslash n and then here for the section our blog post equals blog post plus section plus backslash n and so at the end, we should have our blog post. Print blog post. Blog post. Okay, and then we're gonna write this into a file. 
So the way we do this is that we're going to do dev open blogpost dot txt. I'm able to write it as dev dev dot write dot blog post. And we should have a file at the end. Okay, so here we're gonna print so that we can see how it works uh, and like where it, where it is at. We're gonna print every step of the way. At the same time, we're creating this variable with like all the text. And then at the end, we print the entire thing and we save it into our file. All right, let's go. <clears throat> Let me take some questions while while we are uh, waiting for the program to finish running. Do you guys have any question? Do we need the W for the right? Yes, that's what it means. Oh, the one thing we probably want to add here is a backslash n after the section. Oh, actually, I think we forgot to uh, we forgot to add the section paragraph here <laughs> to the blog post. So blog post equals blog post plus backslash ah plus backslash n. So let's rerun everything. Let's go back to the question. Uh, Chat GPT-3 is so cool. Yes, Izo, I agree with you. Uh, again, this is not Chat GPT. This is GPT-3, which is the engine that Chat GPT is using. So potentially, you could recreate Chat GPT with GPT-3 if you wanted to. Oh, you're saying I forgot the, the double quote. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Omojola. All right. <laughs> Any question, guys? I think it's pretty cool, right? Like in uh, a little bit more than an hour, we have created a program that can write automatically a full blog post based on the title that you give it. That's pretty cool. I, I find it very, very exciting. Is it possible to use F string since this is Python? Yeah, it's it would be potentially a better way, William. But as I said, I'm not proficient in Python, so I'm going to let you uh, give me uh, advice here. Are you going to also automate publishing the blog post on the website? We're not going to do this today, but it's uh, it's a pretty straightforward uh, you know, action to do, Wilfred. If you want to do this, you know you can do that. How can I use this to reply customers as customer rep? Uh, just like, it really depends. Sometimes you're gonna have to train the model a little bit more and we can do this in another section. But uh, basically once, you, once the AI knows about the way to enter uh, your customers, then potentially you can just like do it the same way. You have the question from the customer, you request GPT-3, uh, or a version trained by you with a model trained by you and then it should you know help you uh, answer a lot of the questions of the customers but this is not you know what we're doing today okay we're at section three right now so that's now you understand why i didn't want to do 10 but when you have like more time at home, you can do 10 sections if you want. You can do like 50 sections if you want to, maybe. 
um, and look through that. But like the the API, norm, like honestly, usually it's a little bit faster. Uh, so maybe they're overloaded again uh, today, but it's still like an API call. So it, it takes a little bit of time. I think this is the last section, number five. <clears throat> okay. Why do I have this at the end? Oh, because at the end I, I print the blog post, but I don't have the sections, right? Let's see what it's created. Yes, my blog post seems like a little bit too small. I fuck, I don't have the sections. Yes, of course, plus section. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, but with that, this could be, this should be working. Uh, the one thing though is like we don't want to always have the same file name, right? Because then like if we do another uh, blog post, it's going to replace the file. So probably I'm going to have file name here and my file name is going to be maybe title plus txt. Okay. And let's do the full thing. Okay, so this is no longer requested. So, blog post. And then, okay, we're gonna run it for the last time because this is going to work perfectly now, right? Who thinks it's gonna work perfectly now? Okay, Tony says, GPT-3 is so cool, but I am just watching it as a movie. Yeah, but now that you understand how to create things with it, you can like create like a lot of products, a lot of exciting products. Like these, these like new AI um, available via APIs are like very new. They're very, very, very powerful. And I can't wait to see what you guys are gonna build. Um, actually, now that you're mentioning it, um, we are going to join a hackathon around OpenAI AIs very, very soon. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, I think it's in two weeks. We're going to do this. Uh, Alice is going to help us, right, Alice? Uh, and then I think it's in two weeks, Alice. Do you have like the exact uh, date to share on the chat? So that like everybody we can all join together uh, and we can have fun. We're like creating like a new product with GPT-3 or the other AIs of uh, OpenAI. So there's like uh, also Whisper, there's like um, Codex and there is Daddy2. Can this GPT-3 be implemented for task managing? Uh, probably not exactly the same way that we did uh, it today, but yeah, I guess it's possible. Is it txt? Did I make an, an error? I made an error. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, txt. Oh, it should be dot. You're right. Okay, all right. I'm not gonna stop the. I'm not gonna stop the program for this, but you're right. Okay, so it's gonna start on February the twenty fourth, and it's gonna be one week long. So you're gonna be able to create teams together and try to build something, you know, out of uh, those AI. It's gonna be very exciting.
Alvin says, man, I didn't know I could do that. I love this session, learned a lot. Oh, that's cool. Thank you, Alvin. I'm glad you liked it. Can you also think about automating posting? Totally or better. Like once you have like this, then you can, you know, format a little bit more like with your HTML and like titles and everything. And then you can put that into a blog post or like in your website. So either you do this with an API, um, you know, like uh, some, some blog posts, some blog platforms have APIs and can do this right away. Or you can like have your own website. So it really depends on like what you're using as a website. But totally, then you can like post it uh, and, you know, automate that. That being said, though, the, oh, it didn't work. I didn't put the right thing. No. <laughs> uh, give me a second. So what, what's wrong? Here you can see that I put twice the section and I didn't put the paragraph context, uh, the content paragraph. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So here, it's not section that I want to add, right? It's section paragraph. Okay, we're gonna have to do this again. Uh, okay, I guess it's fine. All right, do, let's do it again. And I can answer some questions while we're doing this. Okay. So yeah, I was saying you can you can automate this uh, to create a blog post automatically and to create content automatically and, and post it on the web right away. But uh, that being said, what Google is telling us is that we're not allowed to do this unless you actually edit a little bit at least. Okay. Ethiopian, can you stop asking like 10 times the same question, please? Thank you. Um, so then this is going to be considered as spam by Google and then your content is not going to be, uh, you know, showing on Google. And basically, if you're not on Google, then you're never going to have any uh, visitors. And so it's, you know, it's not worth it. So like the way normally like people do it is that they use these AIs to create, oh man, Ethiopian, I'm going to have to ban you if you continue. All right, bye. Um, so the way you do this normally is that you use the AI uh, to, um, uh, to create the structure and then you edit it like a minimum. So it gives you some ideas on like what to write and things like that, but then you write it yourself. You can like get some, you know, some chunks of text, but um, you're supposed to write, uh, you know, the blog post and like the context yourself if you do not want to be banned by Google. Uh, so the way, the way, there's like different ways and different uh, companies and different products uh, that are now on the market uh, to check whether a content is being uh, created by an AI. So this is like the very beginning. So those tools don't work very well yet uh, but like if you do something like just as we did today they're gonna 100 percent know that this is ai uh, this is an ai content and so you're gonna be like blacklist blacklisted by google so you don't want to do that so yes so you can automate you can automate everything uh the, the whole the whole pipeline but it's not gonna work uh the way you want it to work Moshut, can we use a C program? Yes, you can, but, um, and you know I love C, but this is not the right tool for the job. <laughs> you don't want to like do it with C, with raw C, but you could, if you want to, like you can have fun and do it in C, no problem. Okay, why we're waiting? Any other question? Promise you don't know Python yet, but you're interested. Yeah, like Python is a pretty cool uh, uh, programming language. Um, once you know like another programming language like C, it's gonna be very easy for you to pick it up. 
Um, and most of the time, like a lot of developers start with Python because it's so quote unquote easy to learn. But I agree with you, it's pretty cool. And uh, this is like the number one language in the AI field right now. So if you want to go into AI, like it's really, really good to know Python. Yeah, Dean, you're right. You can do this with just about any language because what we're doing really is uh, we, we're just calling the API. So you can call APIs with like any language really. Um, cool. All right. So it seems to have worked. Let's see. Okay, will AI replace developers? Number one, introduction. And we have everything. Number two, pros and cons. Oh, you want, we want to actually add like a one more backslash n, right? But other than that, it's working pretty well. So you have your entire blog post here. This is very long. Let's just fix the backslash n. We want two backslash in here and we want one more after the title, right? And then our program is finished. Uh, if GPT-3 is what ChatGPT is based, if we create an app based on this, will I get content without the lag? And will it work at capacity time? <laughs> Yeah, you, you can see that the lag is already like big here. Um, you know, when we ask the every call, we have to wait. So it's not going to be that fast. I mean, obviously, um, uh, ChatGPT is the product based on GPT-3 that they own themselves. So, you know, it's not exactly the same. So you don't really want to compete, but you can try to recreate the same thing. And what I've seen is that uh, when ChatGPT is kind of down or like at capacity, GPT-3 API is still working much better. Sometimes it's down, but like it didn't have, I think it didn't even happen once to me uh, while I was coding with GPT-3. Uh, promise, do you have a video? Cause I'm still having issue knowing what field of programming I want to focus on. Yeah, this is probably for another, for another session. But try the different things and, and um, try like to make sure that you are very good at one thing, at least one programming language, and then use this language with whatever field that you want to uh, dig into later on. Um, okay, so if you guys don't have any other question, this is the end of our session. I think it was pretty cool. In an hour and a half, we created a program using uh, GPT-3 uh, to completely automate uh, the creation of a blog post based only on a single line, uh, on a single title that you provide uh, to the to the script. Uh, once again, I'm going to post all the details today and tomorrow, but we are going to uh, join a hackathon using GPT-3 and all the other uh, APIs and, and products of OpenAI uh, in two weeks. So this is a good introduction on how you can start. So try to think about like, you know, who you want to work with. Uh, we're going to be able to create teams of, I think up to four or maybe six uh, to join the hackathon and try to think about a cool product that you can, you know, create with those, with those AIs. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I can see, I see, you know, all of you at the hackathon. This is going to be very exciting. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody. And I'll see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.